Now, the man you saw walking with Harper there is Joe Oliver. He was the former finance or finance minister during Harper's last months in office. He joins us now for a look back at mm -hmm. Harper's legacy and political life. And I, I really want to ask you, you worked so closely with Stephen mm -hmm. Harper during the final years uh, while he was in charge. What was it like working with him? Well, of course, everyone understands that he's a very cerebral person. And, you know, I can, I can attest to that. I mean, one of the most intense periods of my professional life was preparing the budget. And after going through, you know, a, a complete analysis of each of the issues and huge briefing books, we went into uh, to the Prime Minister's boardroom along with political staff and a group of officials. And I, he sat at the end of the table. I was right next to him, real close. And we went through the items line by line. And he had a complete mastery of, of each of them, while also having a mastery of all the issues that the other ministers, uh, you know, were, were engaged in. So here was someone who really knew his files, who, who loved policy, who understood how, how important uh, it was, uh, the, the types of decisions that, uh, that we were taking. And it was, you know, it was very impressive, sometimes uh, kind of amazing. But I should tell you um, that there's another side of it that, that people don't understandably, uh, you know, fully understand. They do know how smart he was, but I don't think those uh, of us who, who were close to him were, were able to fully convey how passionate uh, he felt about doing better for Canadians and how much he loved uh, the country. And it, it really, th those emotions uh, really uh, dominated his, his thinking on all his decisions. And perhaps were the driver behind some of that tenacity. I interviewed Paul mm -hmm. Wells yesterday, and that was a word he used to describe Harper as a leader, that, that he was tenacious in terms of, of not only achieving power, but then also maintaining it for so, so long. You met him while you were campaigning uh, mm -hmm. on the bus. It's a bit of an interesting story. Can you take us back to that moment? Sure. I was in the heat of the campaign, and the, um, the campaign bus uh, arrived outside the Columbus Center, which is a iconic uh, uh, location in, in my riding. I got on. Uh, um, uh, Ray Novak was there, as, uh, the former Senator Condonino, and we sit, sat down and we engaged in, a, in a, about a half hour uh, discussion um, where he asked me about, you know, what was going on in the riding. And it's, you know, here, here's, you know, one of the most experienced politicians talking to a, someone who's totally new. But he, he, there were two reasons I think he, he did that. One was he actually wanted to know on the ground what was happening. The second thing, I didn't realize at the time, I think he was interviewing me. <laughs> <laughs> For one of those uh, ministerial posts that, yeah, uh, yeah. that y you later were given. So I guess I passed. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And you've had a little bit of a chance now to 10 months to, to sit back and reflect on uh, what you were able to achieve mm -hmm. with Stephen Harper. What do you think the, the greatest accomplishments were during your time working hand in hand with the former prime minister? Well, on the fiscal side, I mean, I could talk for a second uh, after on, about foreign policy, but on the fiscal side, you know, we had emerged uh, from the greatest recession since the Great Depression. Uh, we took, uh, the Prime Minister took a, a non-ideological, pragmatic approach and stimulated the economy when we were in that recession, but always promised to balance the budget. And, uh, you know, while I was Prime Minister, I'm not taking credit for it, we did, in fact, balance the budget. While you were Finance Minister. While I was Finance, <laughs> finance Minister. Unless you're announcing something yeah, here right no, no. now. <laughs> well, I, no, I thought that's what I said. While I was finance minister, and last year, actually, we would have balanced the budget had uh, the, the current government not uh, put in a massive deficit in the, in the last month. So how we did uh, fiscally uh, was admired around the world, and it really made a big difference uh, to, to Canadians. So that was, I think, a central part of his legacy. Lower taxes, the lowest in 50 years, and uh, you know, a strong economy that was doing better uh, than, than the other G7 uh, countries. On the foreign policy side, uh, his was a muscular policy based on, on core uh, principles and values uh, and interests of, of Canada, and uh, I think that was that was another admirable thing uh, where he's left a very positive legacy. And it'll be interesting to see how that plays out with respect to the international aspect of this consulting firm. How do you think he's mm -hmm. going to do there? Well, I think he'll he'll do well because 
he has a uh, plethora of, of contacts, uh, he has a deep understanding of international uh, issues, and he's uh, got uh, intellectual and analytical resources that I, I'm sure uh, will be important uh, to companies that are operating around the world, understanding the importance of geopolitical issues for their, for their businesses. Thanks so much for coming in, Mr. You're Oliver. Most welcome. That is former Finance Minister Joe Oliver. You're watching CBC News Network.